So I'm going to tie what's known or uh, sometimes referred to as a brindle shoot. It's a, um, a Hecuba adult. They're tied on sizes 8 to uh, 12. They're kind of a late summer pattern up in Montana. I'm tying it for a friend of mine. So I've got 30 denier GSP. This is a size 10. I started my thread a couple of bodkin widths behind the eye uh, just to get myself in the third position. And the first thing I need is my wing post. I'm using calf tail in this case. And you can make this as pretty as you want but uh, you want it to be on average about the length of the hook and we'll just do a couple of pinch wraps and then I'll grab both and seat that where I want it before I pull up and I can tie this back just a ways come back up I want to lift this and place some thread wraps underneath just to help keep it up a little bit And now we can, it's always so much harder to do this with the camera in the way. Now we can trim this off at an angle, just lift up and trim that off where you want it. And you can taper it. And now we can wrap back. For the tail, um, I'm using moose mane. And I want, uh, I'm not going to be too particular, but I want a bunch of brown color in there. And um, you can kind of hand stack it before you put it in the stacker. Whoops. And this just helps so that we can save some of these shorter fibers down here. And uh, still use them. This part's kind of... There we go. Normally I can do that a little bit quicker. <clears throat> you don't have to be perfect, uh, just so that they're in kind of ballpark. I'm going to cut the back out. And put them in the stacker. One of these days I'll get a second stacker. I can run two material at one time. But you're looking for oh 30 fibers maybe. Something like that. You want a, you want a decent tail on this. And you want it the length of the uh, fly or just a little bit longer. So I'm going to start in the back, come up and over, just with some loose wraps. And then I'll start to work that forward loosely. And then what that does is it helps keep your tail straight. Now I can lift up. I'm going to place my scissors right at the point of the post. And if they move around a little bit, personally, I don't mind because it helps kind of flare that tail around the hook shank a little bit, as long as you're careful. Now we can kind of tighten down when we get close. Okay. So now I'm just going to lift up on the post and actually make the post. And if you notice on the 
Oh, oh, come on. On the abdomen part of this, I didn't uh, crank down on anything. I know I mentioned it, but um, this will help help us form our entire body in a minute. Okay, I'm going to jump my thread to the front. Next, I'm going to add my hackle. Uh, most patterns call for like a golden badger or a golden dyed um, grizzly feather. And so I've prepped it dry fly style. I'm just going to gently place this in about where I want it. Come down just a little bit. And then I can pull up to where I want it on top of my post. Or to start on top of my post. Now I'll go ahead and wrap this in on top. Uh, the dubbing blend on these, uh, if you look them up, uh, which they're kind of hard to find, but uh, they can be wild. But basically it's going to be a ginger olive, uh, natural, hair's mask type dubbing. <laughs> um, but uh, if you have kind of like a golden ginger color, that's that seems to be what uh, everyone's using. So I'm going to take my tag there and just t tilt it to the back on the underside and help catch that. And we're going to make this gold ribbed. So you can use a uh, gold wire if you like, or I want to use some uh, uh, gold oval tinsel. I like the look of this better. It's a preference thing. For me, it kind of gives the more classic look. And I'm going to come back and start wrapping tight. It's kind of a pain in the, you know what, with the uh, hackle in the way. But before I get all the way to the back, what I'll do is I'll take a drop of super glue and put it right on top in both sides and just kind of let it do its thing. And uh, while it's doing that, I'm going to grab from underneath and lift up. And at the same time, you can take your bodkin and do this if you don't like getting super glue on you. And I'm just going to kind of work that glue in there. And what that does is that's going to help keep that tail orientated in a similar fashion when we work everything forward. So we're just looking for a smooth taper here. And we're going to have to just kind of work around that hackle. Oops. Came in too close and collapsed it. We don't want to do that. If it flares a little bit, I mean, these are fishing flies, so <clears throat> it's not a horrible, horrible deal. If, it clap, or if, uh, it, if your thread collapses on the tail is what I was getting at. Sorry, I'm trying to get ahead of myself here. And then uh, your tail flares. So here's kind of this crazy dubbing I have. And it's a short fiber dubbing, so aligning it can be a little tricky. I know it's out of camera, but I'm just got to play with it. And and I'm just going to take it, dub it, put one turn in. I'm going to actually come over a little bit more than that and twist and tighten just to kind of tighten things up on the back side. And I've got a lot hanging off the back. I don't need all of it. Sorry, I've got things going on in the background here. My help is doing things. <laughs> all right, so now we just kind of dub this guy forward. But do you want a decent taper to the fly. We want a kind of a beefy body. I'm going to undo that and get rid of that. Blend it back together. 
that is one nice thing about using natural hair is it's much easier to blend back together than some dubbings. Okay, I'll leave a little bit down below. We just want to get our uh, dubbing full up to the post and then we're going to jump to the front side. If you get used to tying parachutes this way, they don't really they don't take as long as this video and that's quite frankly because uh, you're probably not tying with a camera in front of you. I know I, I bitch about that a lot, but it's it's true. It's so true. Okay, so when we get to behind the post, now we can bring our rib forward. And I'll take my first rib on the back side there, and then I'll just start to move it up. Evenly spaced. Five to six turns is what we're looking for to the post. And I'll bring it to the front side, make a wrap around the front, bring my thread over, switch hands, pull down, and I've got that thing locked in place. I'll put a few wraps to the front, I'll reverse it, put a few wraps to the back, and now my rib is totally in place. And I'm going to go back to my dubbing. <clears throat> And get just a little bit more. And on the front side, if you're not used to doing parachutes, um, I recommend making your noodle uh, a little bit thinner um, because it builds up real quick. And so if you, it's easier to just to add more wraps. And so I did this figure eight to kind of help align everything, but. Some people don't. That's totally up to you. Pull some of that off because we don't need all that. Also a really, I should say another nice feature about dubbing. So I'm just going to kind of come up here and grab everything and clean it up a little bit. Work my 30 denier GSP to the back. I'm going to switch threads at this point, which I like to do, and apparently my thread came out of my bobbin. should have double-checked it before I started. Hopefully it loads quickly. And of course not. Why would it do that? I'm shooting a video. Let's see if we can get it here. There we go. So I'm going to switch over to uh, Shear 14.0 and Orange, and I'll start behind the eye at this point. I'm going to wrap myself back, and I'm going to take my two bobbins and s swirl them around, and just capture everything. Once I do that, I can trim out both of them at the same time. And we're coming on the home stretch here. I'm just going to glue the thread and do a wet whip on this. Small heads are good. And with this 14 knot, it really allows you to build that head well, I think, anyway. You could color the uh, GSP if you wanted to. All right, now I'm going to turn this guy vertical. Um, it's up to you uh, what you like to do here. You can go with the uh, GSP if you want, or what I mean, whatever you're, you're using. Uh, but I'm going to switch back over, uh, or stay with my switched over thread, I should say, and go with the uh, Griffin. And I try to start these about in the middle on the post and work up a few wraps 
I just want to slide off, so you just lift that up and slide it back into place. When it does that, you, you kind of know your post is at the uh, at the top of where you're, uh, or at least we're at the, boy, I'm tongue-tied tonight, at least at the top of where your thread wraps made the post. There we go. I'm going to come back down, and then again, I'm going to cross over my thread because it's so fine. It won't make a big deal. I make a couple wraps in front, a couple wraps in back. And then I'm going to glue this post shut as I finish laying this out. Uh-oh. Got to love the live stuff. And so what I'll do is I'll just get a little bit of super glue. I'll put it on my post just to lock everything in place. I'm going to lift that back up. And I can kind of draw my thread. Now I'm just going to make my post as thick or as even. And then I'm going to take my thread way down into the post space. Now I can start to work my hackle. I didn't quite seat that perfectly, so I'll trim these out. When I'm looking at my clock, it's 16 minutes in, and it's it's amazing. I can, without the camera in my face, I can tie these in about seven minutes. Crazy what the camera does, but I don't I don't edit. I just I roll with it. So you can skip forward. I'm just gonna work that. You know, we are gonna work that feather. If you if you're having trouble with this, you can swoop your feather out and around in a in different at different angles, and then eventually it'll line up, and you can lift straight up, and then it'll start to wrap. And the uh, ang at the angle in the direction that you want it to. <coughs> Actually, I don't even usually make my posts quite this big. Or my, uh, yeah, my post. Sorry, it's late. Getting tired and terminology starts to flow funky. And as you're wrapping, you can kind of angle your hackle too. And get it to, get that stem to grab some of those barbs that are moving in some crazy direction. So once you're here, now I'm just going to take my thread and work it through. And I'm going to do this so oh, two or three times. Just trying to collect any barbs that are misbehaving. All right, now I'm going to put some tension on my thread and now I can actually just start to rotate my vise. And use that to make the wraps. I'm gonna lift this guy forward, put a wrap over. And now I can make some underneath the hackle, collecting anything else. Okay, once I have that, <coughs> I come in here and trim out that stem. And, uh, you know, a lot of people whip finish these things shut. I don't. I just, I super glue them shut. Um, I can just do it by rotating my vise around and keeping it under the hackle or the barbules. Just working everything around. Once that glue runs dry, there's my post. Pull tight. Grab any barbules that you can and just kind of lift them into place. Give it just a few seconds. And uh, if you're using super glue, it, I mean, it really grabs, so you don't have to worry about it too much. I just lift it back on top. And that's really just to show you. Let me kind of lift this guy up. And, uh, if any glue got stuck in the feathers, you can 
work them out right now. Work them out before it dries. But the, you know, these are fishing flies, right? I see a lot of people want to tie everything so perfect. Well, I guess you can tie everything perfect, but... Anyway. There you go. That's what's known as a brindle shoot. It's a hecubia. Hecuba imitation. I always say that too fast and mingle the letters. Uh, if you like the video, always appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, like, subscribe, share. Um, check out some of my other videos. You can also uh, check me out over at Fly Tying for Beginners on Facebook. Answer the questions. That's your golden ticket in. And um, as always, Happy tying, everybody. Take care.